minutes out? Um, no, I should be fine. Thank you. <laughs> right. Um, I've got enjoy. Let me just turn. Oh, I've got the main. A bit of another light on. It's a little dark here. It's like a cave. Right, that's a bit better. Right, I can see now. I've just come back. I've been with friends all day playing <coughs> playing board games. We're quite keen on board games. I even won a game, so I'm in a good mood. You caught me in a good mood. Oh, well. oh there you go. What can I say? <laughs> it, it, it happens once in a blue moon. I actually do win something. I'm rubbish at board games. All the way for is catchy if you want to cheat. <laughs> um, right, I've got Enjoy Life Forever in front of me. There's a couple of chapters I've been looking at. Maybe it's best just to choose just one thing, though, rather than jump all over the shop. Um, it would be have to be something that you're familiar with. Um, it talks about real Christians in chapter 19. I'm curious about the phrase real Christians. And then it talks about the truth in lesson 19. So I'm, I'm curious about that. I'm also curious about the faithful and discreet slave in lesson 54. Which of those two chapters, lesson 19 or lesson 54, would you be familiar with? I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't looked it up. I haven't, you know, I haven't looked at this. So it's just going to, uh, yeah, I need, I need to look at it as well to, to, to do it myself. So tell me what your question is and see if I can answer uh, first of all. So lesson 19, what did you say that was again? Um, it's the, the title is, Are Jehovah's Witnesses Real Christians? Right. Okay. Have, you, have you had contact with George and Seed before? Have you had a Bible study before or anything? I've spoken to them before, but I haven't found them helpful. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, the introduction on page 79 says, As Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. Why? Consider the basis for our belief, the name that sets us apart, and the love we have for one another. So my first question here is, it says, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. I understand. Do you believe there are real Christians in other groups? I used to attend a Baptist church many, many years ago. I don't go anywhere oh, now. So do you believe there are at least a few real Christians amongst the Baptists? That's, that's been a good question. I think it's, I think it's one of these kind of questions that's kind of hard to, to actually explain, but there can, there can only be one true religion in the world. And, you know, the God has only ever used one organisation at a time. When you think it used to be like the period of the patriarchs, you had the judges, you had the, the, the period of the kings and the prophets, etc., and then you went to the Christian congregation. He's never really used two organisations to teach the truth. So only one can be true. You know, we, we kind of talk about things like, you know, things like, oh, it's, that's, that's a wee white lie, or that's a wee half a truth, or that's partly true, you, you, you know, that kind of thing. But as soon as you contaminate the truth by a lie, then the whole thing becomes a lie. It, it, I'm trying to say, it's a bit like taking a glass of a, a clean water and putting 1% arsenic in it. You would never drink it because it's been contaminated. It just becomes poison. It's yeah, but, but every other... Folks, yes, but, yes, but every other religious group could say that about you. The yeah, Mormons yeah, could say... The Mormons, say, yeah. the Mormons could <laughs> say... <laughs> The Mormons could say we are the only true organization on earth and other groups are like mixing um, milk with a little bit of arsenic. Mm. And every yeah. other group other than us, they have a little bit of arsenic in their teaching. Some have more, yeah. like the Catholics. Some have less, maybe like the Baptists. But, but they could say, you know, any group could say we are um, God's one true organization. The Bible never says that. The Bible never says there is one true organization. If it does, then well, it show does. me the verse. It does. Yeah, it does. I want to show you. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get my iPad or something. The Bible says that Sorry, it's difficult to understand you. Could you just say that again? Yeah, yeah I'm doing more than what I'll try and find it. I'll try and find it where it says that. I don't think you will. There's no verse anywhere in the New Testament that uses the word organisation. No, but it does 
say there's only one faith. Only That's one faith. Doesn't, no, you said there's one true organisation, so I'm holding you to what you yeah. said. I'm not holding you to what the Bible says, I'm holding you to what you said. You said there's one true organisation. Okay, prove it. Show me the scripture that says that. Well, what, what, would, what would say to you, Robert, rather than argue about words, is that Jehovah's always had an organisation on the earth that he's used. And I gave the example of the period of the, the, period of the, the patriarchs, the kings, the judges, etc., the prophets. These are different periods where the gods had an organisation on the earth that he used the judges, he used the kings. Uh, so, you know, you, 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 I don't know why I argue about words, Robert. You know, I, I beg your pardon? That, Sorry, can you just gonna, say that I don't again? I don't know why I argue about words, but I'll show you what it says. Well, uh, hold, hold on, hold on. The Bible is written in words. The yeah. Bible is written in words. The Gospel is communicated in words. It's not communicated by hugs or kisses. It's communicated by by words. So surely God wants us to pay close attention to words. Now, all I'm asking you is, are you saying, I mean, going back to your book, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. Okay, do you believe there are real Christians in any other groups or are all the real Christians only Jehovah's Witnesses? What we say in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5 One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Yeah. So there is only one true faith, there's only, there's only one God. So we should worship God the way that He wants us to worship Him rather than worship the way that we want to worship God. Do you not think that makes more sense? Yes, but the Seventh day Adventists will say, We are the one faith. If you're not with us, you're not with the one God, because we're the only ones. We're the only organization on earth that God is using. The Christadelphians say the same thing. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And the Christadelphians say we are that one faith. If you're not with us, you're not with God, because we're the only faith that God is using. How would you know then if God was using one organization? You need to compare some of the teachings with the Bible. The Bible has... Yeah, um, I don't think the Bible has got anything whatsoever to do with organisations. There's no reference anywhere in the Bible to organisations. Maybe not the word. Maybe no. No, maybe not the word. But do you not think that God's a God of order? But he would they use all different organisations? If he's never used all different organisations in the past, why use all different organisations? Could you just uh, say that can... again, please? Could you just say that again? I'm just thinking about yeah. what you're saying. Like... If Jehovah's always, if God, the true God, if you call him Jehovah, I'm not sure if you, uh, that's okay with you, but he's only ever used one group of people at a time on the earth to preach the truth. Approve and that. What I said to you earlier was, if he contaminate the truth, you he need to lie, prove that. Becomes a lie. So we need to find out what the true organisation was. You need to prove that. So, if you make yeah. a statement, you need to prove it. It's, 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 I mean, I've spoken to Muslims recently. And uh -huh. They believe if you repeat something many, many times, then it's true and no one can challenge you. So they'll say, Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a prophet. Once they've repeated that to me 10 or 11 times, they're thinking, what's wrong with me? Because I'm not saying Muhammad, peace be upon him, is, is a prophet. You don't prove anything by repetition. You, you, if you make a statement, there are lots of different people on Earth. There are 8 billion people on Earth. They don't all believe the same thing. Okay? There are many different religious groups. And there's many different atheist groups. They can't all be right because they're all saying different things. Now, I'm reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever, which says, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. I just want to know, do you believe that the real Christians are only amongst the, Je the Jehovah's Witnesses? Or do you believe there are real Christians in, in other groups? I gave an example of the Baptists or the Methodists, two of the most lovely men I ever met, the kind, most kind-hearted people I ever met, were two Methodist professors. Yeah, I, I would totally agree. There's good, good people in every religion. No, 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 no. That, that wasn't my question. You must, well, I, I, you well, must listen carefully. 
Otherwise, we'll be talking past each other. I'll answer that question. Sorry? That you're, you're, you're not letting me speak. I'm trying to explain, you know, because sometimes you can't just answer something with a one word answer. So I'm trying to explain that, you know, before I would say, uh, to commit myself, what I would say is there good people in every religion. No, no, again, please that. stop. Please so stop. Because you're not yeah. listening to what I said. You're going off on a tangent. I did never ask you... I, because it would save time if you address my question. If you don't want to answer my question, then just, just say, Robert, I don't want to answer your question. And that's fine. We can move on. Okay. But okay. don't... Okay. If I ask you the phrase, real Christians, then don't tell me about good people. Because I, I don't, don't want to know about good people. Your book says, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we, we are real Christians. All I want to know, and you don't have to answer the question, is are all the real Christians Jehovah's Witnesses? Or are there a few say, real Christians uh, amongst the Baptist or the Methodists or some other no, religious I group? I, I don't think there's, 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 there's the Baptists or the Methodists or any other religion has the truth, the truth from, the, from the Bible. I think Jehovah's Witnesses have. That, that would say that. Yeah. But... I would say there's good in every religion, good people. If we didn't really believe the good people in other religions, why would we go out in the world and try and talk, contact these people and try and help them? The truth. What is a good person? You, you've introduced well, I, the term good person. What do you mean by that? I, I feel as if, Robert, I feel as if you're trying to, you're not actually looking for them, you're just like trying to pick an argument. Because every time I try and speak to you, uh, you're, you're kind of jumping on things that I say. Well, I'm just yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to yes. you know, cause any trouble or anything, but uh, you know, I do believe there's good people in every religion, and I think if we didn't believe that, we wouldn't be going around the doors trying to find these people. There's lots of people looking for the truth of the Bible, and that's what Jehovah's Witnesses do. They try and teach people from the Bible. What I is don't it? Feel, I don't feel, just as Jesus did, not feel there was everybody's got the truth. Right, you're now talking about the truth. What is the truth? Because <laughs> you, you, you keep using. The Bible need the rest. Sorry, just just go. If you go slowly, I can follow you. It's easier for me to follow you if you go slowly. You've used the phrase "good person," but you haven't defined or told me what a good person is. It's kind of vague. I think it's basically a nothing burger. It's a meaningless term. You now talk about the truth. What is the truth? The, the truth is the same book by me. It says the truth from the Bible. From the Bible, lots of people they take me bits and people bits and pieces from the Bible that they like, but they leave the rest. Do you know what I mean? No. no so exactly. no. no. So, you you I'm need to go slow. You, you, you need you I'm need to go slow to talk to someone. You need to go slow. And it's best to ask questions to find out you're not listening to me. I think we're doing this on the phone. I think that we're not really getting the sense of what you're, what you're meaning. Could we, could we meet up sometime? Well, if you, I'm south of the border. If you want to travel, then that's fine. I don't, I don't have a car. Where, where, where I couldn't afford it. Pardon? Where, where are you? Do you have a job in the West End of Glasgow? No, I'm south of the border. Oh, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Why, um, why did you phone, phone us? I'm just like, that's, that's, that's a funny, you know, to get a phone call from Glasgow. Well, I thought you might be able to help. I'm oh, reading your book. But I mean, there's lots of congregations down south that you could have contacted. I just wonder why well, you, you I have. Yeah. I have. And they told me, go to jw.org and do some research. Then I phoned the... Um, service desk the bethel service desk and they told me oh. go to the local congregation when i went when i phoned the local congregation they told me to go to the bethel service desk everyone seems to pass the pass the buck on to somebody else and okay. no one really wants to sort of discuss your literature or discuss the bible now what you just said you said the truth is not the bible it's it's the truth y y about the no, bible no, 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 no. I said that the Bible, the, you know, Jesus said, you know, what does truth talking about the Bible, didn't he? So it's the Bible I'm talking about. So there's lots of things that are in the Bible that people don't uh, don't agree on, or they say they get misinterpreted, etc. But I feel as if I have got the truth. You know, I was talking to somebody yesterday who yes. was talking about the, 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 the Trinity doctrine, and he was trying to pull things at heart to say that there is a trinity, and I was trying to show him other scriptures, but he didn't accept the other scriptures, he only accepted the ones that he wanted to listen to. 
you know what I mean? So it's trying to find what is the actual truth. So are, are you looking for the truth? Are you looking for a, a Bible study? Are you looking to get to know Jehovah's Witnesses? I'm just wondering what you're, what you're looking for, Robert. Yes, I would be happy for a Bible study. Um, but you would have to focus on one thing slowly. And when you talk to somebody, sometimes it's best to ask questions to know if the other person has understood what you're talking yeah. about. I, I haven't meant to be rude or to be um, um, mm. aggressive. If I have, then I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean that. But mm. you've made a lot of statements and you haven't clarified what you mean by those statements. You talked about a good person. I still don't know what you mean by that. You talked about the truth. And you talked about the truth. This is about 10 minutes ago. You talked about truths about the Bible. So, mm -hmm. yes, the Bible says that your word is truth. But you were using the word truth about someone's opinion about the Bible or what somebody has said about the Bible. So you, you use truth in a different concept. And again, I just need to know what you actually mean by that. Um, paragraph one. Okay. Sorry, go on. There is things in the Bible that are either absolute or they're not. They're either absolute truth or they're not. Uh, but either Jesus is part of a, a, a three-person trinity or he's not. Excuse me, can I respond to that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Trinitarian creeds do not teach that Jesus is part of a trinity. The idea that the trinity has parts and that Jesus is one part of God, one third of God, it's called partialism. It's a heresy. It's not taught in the Trinitarian creeds. Now, it, maybe you've spoken to somebody who arranges the flowers in an Anglican church. No, no, no. no I was actually brought up a Catholic, and the, 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 the Catholic Church doctrine is that all three are all knowing, all eternal, all powerful. Yeah, the, the three, there's a three in one God. That's, that's the, the church, the doctrine. I was actually brought up a Catholic. I was always a Jehovah's Witness. What you've just said is completely irrelevant to what I said. You used the word parts. You said that somebody has told you that Jesus is a part of God. Now, there is no Trinitarian... Could I, could, can I finish my sentence, please? There is no Trinitarian creed that says that Jesus is a part of God or that God has parts or three parts or that Jesus is a third of God. Now, if I'm wrong... Please go to the primary source evidence, one of the Trinitarian creeds, and show me where they say that. They don't. So the first thing is, if you're going to criticise somebody else, you need to be accurate and fair and honest in your criticisms of another person. Uh, I'm actually very interested in the Trinity, but the first thing when you discuss anything with anyone is you should both try and understand the other person's position and if you disagree with it, you do so accurately. Okay. Um, I, what I would say is, I was brought up to, to look at the Trinity, the Jesus, Jehovah, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy, the Holy Spirit, are three persons and one, all equal, all eternal, all knowing, all, power, all powerful. Okay, yeah. okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, so... Well, established that. That's what I was brought up to believe. And I was actually, you know, I was brought up to Charles, he's actually in Columbia, and the, the instruction with the priest. My mum changed to be a Catholic, with the instruction with the priest, etc. And that's, that was what they said. But I'm going to the Bible. The Bible doesn't actually teach that. Doesn't teach what? That the, the, they're all equal, all known, all eternal, all powerful. Um, well, the Bible doesn't use the word Trinity. Bible doesn't use the word Arian, the Bible doesn't use the word Unitarian, the Bible doesn't use the word um, Watchtower Bible and Tract Society or Theocratic. I notice Jehovah's Witness literature uses the word Theocratic. Um, but people who tend to reject the Trinity tend to be either modalists or Unitarians or, or Socinians. Each of those terms, Unitarian, Socinian, Arian, they're not found in Scripture, just as Trinity isn't found in Scripture. Yeah. Um, the arguments... Well, that's, that's the, the point I'm trying to make is that it's not in the Bible. You can do that. We're trying to say, well, what is truth? Yeah, so but, trying to say, if it's not in the Bible, then you kind of just say that the Bible says that, and that's okay. The Bible says what? That, that God is a Trinity. But, I, I, excuse me, excuse me. I've just said to you 
the Trinity doesn't, the, the Bible doesn't use the word Trinity. So why are you now accusing me and asking me to prove something that's contrary to what I've just said? You have to be honest when you talk to other people. You have to be honest. You have to be truthful and you have to be honest. The first thing you always do is you try and understand the other person's position. I'm, I'm doing my best, honestly. I'm trying my best here, Robert. All right. Uh, okay. What, what, what I was trying to say was that we're trying to establish what is truth, and I said the Bible is truth. But people take out the bits that they like and leave the rest. That's the, that's what we started talking about. And I was giving you an example that some people, they believe in the Trinity and they say the Bible says this and the Bible says that. And the, and the Bible doesn't say that. I, don't, just I don't care about says. some people. I really don't care about some people. I, I really don't care at all. Okay, okay. Um, I don't care what some people have told you. If you wish to say anything about the Trinity, then you have to go to the Trinitarian creeds and find out what Trinitarians state. For instance, you talked, um, you said that Trinitarians believe, and you were accurate, that they are co-equal and co-eternal, and yet there are three distinct persons. Yeah. My question to you there would be, why do Trinitarians believe that? Well, I, I think it started about the first century, but honestly, the entire the, the, the churches, but the point that I'm trying to say, we're trying to establish what is truth, and I was trying to say the truth from the Bible, so if you look at the Bible, okay. the Bible can say what, what is truth. So if the Bible doesn't teach a Trinity, then it's not true. But the Bible, the Bible doesn't teach the Bible. Look, you are an Aryan. OK, or similar people to you would be Socinians. Other similar people to you would be Unitarian. In America, huge numbers of Pentecostals are modalists. They believe that Jesus is the father. So when Jesus is praying, he's praying to himself because Jesus is the father. Now, I'm not saying I agree with that, but those words, modalist, Socinian, Unitarian, Arian, Trinitarian, they're all invented terms, invented centuries after the Bible. And they're words that are used to explain what various people believe. So it's not really very important the term isn't important. What's important is what does the person believe about the Bible? And is that belief accurate or not? The reason why Trinitarians believe, and I did ask you a question, you didn't answer it. The reason why Trinitarians believe that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are co-equal and co-eternal is because the Trinity teaches that they're consubstantial. Consubstantial means that the, the Son, the Nature, the very being, the very essence of the Son, is in the Father. He's eternally begotten of the Father. And the Holy Spirit also shares the Father's nature and the nature of the Son because he proceeds from the Father and the Son. So that's the basis of the Trinitarian belief. Whether you believe it or not, it's important to know why people believe what they believe. And if they're wrong, then if you have a good understanding of what they believe, you'll be far more effective in refuting it than if you just go by what some person has told you. So the whole basis of the Trinity is that they are consubstantial. The, the Son shares the Father's nature. The Holy Spirit shares the same nature as, as the Father and the Son. They are one substance, one being, one spirit, one nature. They're not three separate beings with three separate spirits who are three parts of a three three part God. That, that's not what the Trinity teaches. Um, I'm finding this very interesting. Do you want to go on to Lesson 19, Paragraph 1 or not? Or do you want to continue to talk about the Trinity? Are you actually, you're actually looking for something, Robert? Because I honestly feel as if even just the way you're talking, you're looking for an argument. <laughs> to me, it's so simple. You know, you're, 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 you believe in the three, three in one God, or you don't. Right, right. The Trinity, the Trinity is the Trinity is not a three in one God. That's a that's a dishonest. That I don't I don't care. Most people in most churches don't know what they're talking about. I'm only interested in what the creeds of the Christian Church 
teach. And what you'll find is I, I, I used to go to a Baptist church. OK, um, the Baptist church will have on its website a doctrinal statement of faith. And it's usually pretty good and pretty accurate because they just copy it down from from some other some other group. But when you actually speak to Billy Bob, the pastor or the pastor's son, who's been made an elder, who hasn't even read the Bible through once. And when you get to ask them, okay, could you please explain the Trinity? Then what I have found repeatedly is that very often in a great many religious institutions, I don't wish to pick on one, um, but I was told in a Baptist church by my home group leader that the Trinity was pagan. <laughs> um, what you will find is that they don't actually know what they're talking about. They just make it all up and pretend that they really are Bible experts and that they know what they're talking about. I'm not a Bible expert, but if you want to talk to me about the Trinity, I would go to the creeds of the Christian church and I try to be accurate, accurate and fair and honest and truthful in my dialogues with the person at that level, at the level of accurately defining and accurately discussing what the Trinity teaches. Or if I speak to someone who's a modalist, many, many Pentecostals today reject the Trinity for something that you would see as basically similar, but it's not. It's modalism. It's the belief that Father, Son and Holy Spirit are one person, not three persons. So Jesus is the Father. So when Jesus is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane in John 17, 1, he's praying to himself. It's the flesh of Jesus praying to the spirit, the divinity of Jesus. Again, it's not, that's not what I believe, but that's what modalists believe. Yeah. Whenever you... I know that. But if you're going to talk to someone, you start from a position of being accurate, of being fair and being honest. And if you don't do that, then any discussion becomes a complete waste of time. Um, imagine if somebody went up to you, you're at your Jehovah's Witness cart and somebody's insulting to you. They say, oh, you're a complete loony. You know, you're mad. You're insane. You believe in that Joseph Smith. You believe in the Book of Mormon. Yeah, yeah, you're a crazy guy who believes in Joseph Smith. Now, you're not a Mormon. You're a Jehovah's Witness. And it's unfair for somebody to sort of dismiss you rudely as a sort of nutty, crazy person because you believe in the Book of Mormon and you're distributing the Book of Mormon at the cart. And you could say to the person, no, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. Look at our literature. We don't have the Book of Mormon here. We regard the Book of Mormon as heresy. Please examine our literature on JW.org. You will not find the Book of Mormon here. Here's my mobile phone. Here's JW.org. You look, all the literature is on um, published by ourselves. We don't distribute the Book of Mormon. We don't believe the Book of Mormon. We don't believe Joseph Smith is a prophet. Now, if the person just laughs in your face and says, "Ah, oh, you're a crazy man. You believe in Joseph Smith. Then they're not listening to you. They're just repeating like a parrot something they've been told. And they're not being fair and honest and truthful with you. So it doesn't matter. The first thing in any discussion, whether it's politics or religion, or even if you want to discuss football, if, if you, uh, you come from Glasgow, I don't know, you know, whether you're Celtic or Rangers, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. Whatever you discuss, you start with a principle of being honest and truthful and fair and above all accurate about the other person and what the other person has says. You, you don't misrepresent them because if you. If a person starts off misrepresenting, then you can't really have a conversation. No, no, I, I think that, that's fair enough. OK. Oh. Yeah. Um, paragraph one on page 79. On what... the Joy Life Forever. Uh, yeah, process. yeah, um, yeah. So that chapter 19. Yes, uh, I mean, I don't, okay. unless you want to discuss the Trinity no, no, further. No, no, no. I was only trying to establish that, you know, the lots of people can take bits and pieces off the Bible, and they still that the Bible says this, that, and they take off, and it doesn't say that. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Obviously, trying to make a big thing. Give me, give me one example of that. Well, what, what I did the other one was a trinity. People say, right, that they start there a little bit of the trinity. Right. The Bible doesn't teach the trinity. There's another one, somebody said that the, the soul was immortal, and that when you die... Just deal with one thing. 
just deal with one thing at a time because if you pile up multiple points i won't be able to follow you the, the trinity well, I'll, I'll you. Well, let, me, let me think how i can put it no, please, please, one thing at a time, slowly. If you bombard a person with multiple facts or you speak too quickly, then the conversation takes very, very long. It becomes long-winded. It's best to make short points, deal with facts, uh, and just deal with one thing at a time. You said the the word Trinity is not in the Bible. I agreed with you. Well, that's fine, then that's established. Right, but hold on. Your belief isn't in the Bible either. You are, You are a... An Aryan. Your belief, Arianism, is not found in the Bible. Other people, some Pentecostals, millions, millions of Pentecostals around the world are modalists. They reject the Trinity in favour of the belief that there's one God who's one person and that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Spirit. The word modalism isn't in the Bible. See, what happened was from the third century onwards people started disagreeing about who jesus was and so there was a big controversy in the christian church um, one of the early groups were the modalists who said well there's one god and he's one person jesus and jesus is the father jesus is the son jesus is the holy spirit along came another group and they were the arians they followed Arius of Alexander. They said, no, 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 there's only one God. That's the Father. And the Son is not God. He's a pretty good person. He's, he's pretty mighty. He's pretty, pretty wonderful. But he's not Yahweh God. He's a little bit lesser than Yahweh God. And they were called technically semi-Arians. And there was a group that was a bit more extreme than that. They were the Arians. They, they said flat out, the Son is not God at all. He's not God-like. And there were many, many different groups. There were the Nestorians. Um, there were a whole range of different religious gr groups. Now, all of these groups, Trinity, Arian, Unitarian, Socinian, Modalist, you don't find any of this language in the Bible. So the language that you use to identify your belief, Jehovah's Witnesses believe in Jehovah's theocratic organization. The word theocratic is just as non-biblical as the word Trinity. The Trinity word Trinity is not found in the Bible. But Jehovah's Witnesses will not find the word theocratic in the Bible. And if you're a Pentecostal and you bang a tambourine, you say, I believe, I believe in the rapture. OK, you don't find the word rapture in the Bible. So lots of different religious groups like to point the finger at other groups. But they don't realize that they do the same thing. I was just meaning that, yeah, a real, I believe that Jehovah's Witnesses are real Christians. Yeah, I believe that's where the original question was. Yes. Yeah. So uh, do you believe that... Good people in our religions are trying to find them. Yeah. Do yeah, you... Yeah. Them, trying to help people. Can. Do you do, like, one thing at a time? Back. It's always you always achieve a lot more. A discussion's easier if you just make one single point. If you make multiple points, it slows the conversation right down, and you have to keep repeating yourself and ask the person to explain again. Do you believe that only Jehovah's Witnesses are real Christians, or are they are there real Christians in other groups? I believe Jehovah's Witnesses are the only true religion. Yeah, they're the only real Christians. Yeah. OK, um, I basically I, I basically read that in the Watchtower, 15th of November, 1981, page 21, which says, quote, and while now the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's organization for salvation. So the official position of the Watchtower is you must go to Jehovah's organization for salvation. Yeah. Just, just like Jesus said, there is only one, the one true religion. Jesus never okay. said Jesus never said there is the one true religion. Which which verse can you show me where Jesus says there is one true religion? Uh, 
Um, that is that is not Jesus. That is Saint Paul, and he doesn't say the exact words. That again, it's it's quicker if we make just one single point at a time. Ephesians four five: one Lord, one faith, one baptism. G yeah. Paul is the speaker there, not Jesus. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's right. Secondly, it doesn't say there is only one true religion. You've just one, it, it doesn't it doesn't one, say that. It says one faith. It says one faith, but it doesn't say there is one true religion, because Ephesians four five is taken to mean by some religious groups that there is only one religion which is us so to the christadelphians one lord one faith one baptism what is the one faith it's the christadelphian organization and if you don't go to the christadelphian organization you can't be a real christian because there's only salvation in the one true religion which is the christadelphian religion the seventh day adventists teach the same thing all these other groups are of the devil they have the mark of the beast because they meet on sunday the only true religion would be the Seventh-day Adventists and maybe a few other little similar Sabbath-keeping groups. Although they don't keep the Sabbath at all, they're actually Sabbath breakers. But they believe they're the only ones who keep the Sabbath. And so anyone outside of that little group cannot be the one true religion. Um, do you mind I if I... I think, I think there may be an, an example uh, of what do you say that with different religions who called on him. Uh, maybe an example. Uh, I'll just find Matthew, Matthew chapter seven. Matthew chapter that. what? Matthew chapter seven. Right, you're going to go to verse twenty-one to twenty-three. Yeah, yeah. I was actually, yeah, I think yeah, but, yeah. But everyone uses that verse. Lord, Lord. Um, Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he do, who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many f wonderful work, wo many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Well, according to the Christadelphians. The people who are practicing lawlessness are the people outside of their organization. To the Seventh-day Adventists, the people who are practicing lawlessness, they have the mark of the beast on them because they meet on Sundays, would be people outside of their organization. There's thousands and thousands of little religious groups who take Matthew 7, 21 to 23 and say, unless you come to our group, and submit to our leaders then jesus is going to say to you at the judgment i never knew you because the mark of being accepted by jesus is to join our organization and submit to our leaders the point i was trying was trying to make there there's not every organization that is acceptable there can only be one true religion it's not i'm trying to put other, other religions down as i said i've already said there's lots of good people in other religions where does the Bible say that? Where does the Bible say there's only one true religion? Well, see, if you look at the scripture, I was, just, I was just saying there, it says lots of people call me Lord, Lord. Okay? So the people who say Lord, Lord to Jesus, they would, they would, they would call themselves Christians. Okay? No. 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 The word Christian was first used several years after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. I think it's in Acts 11. 28 or somewhere around acts 11 yeah, yeah, it says the christians it says they were first called it says it says they were first called christians in antioch i'd have to find the exact verse um it could be yeah acts 11 26 and the disciples were first called christians in antioch acts 11 is probably I'm, I am, I'm not a Bible scholar, but it, it could be somewhere around five to ten years after Jesus's death, burial and resurrection. Well, let's, let's not say Christians in this particular time, just say there were people who were following Christ, OK? They were sincere, is what I'm trying to say, because they were, they were sincere. They were saying to Jesus, Lord, Lord, they were doing powerful works, uh, expelling demons, etc. And they thought they had the truth. 
Well, Jesus in verse 23 says, Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, why would they say that? Why would they say that to people? If they were very sincere, they were calling them Lord, Lord, why would they say, Get away from me? Um, because most people follow organisations. They look for men, other men, who lead organisations, and they follow those men. Christ is saying here that you have to follow him. So okay. I shouldn't be looking to the Pope or to some Pentecostal TV preacher or to the head of the Mormon Church in America or the head of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in America for my salvation. I should be trying to look to Christ and to obey Christ because my salvation is dependent upon my relationship with Christ. I don't have a religious organization or some man like the head of the Mormon church or some Pentecostal TV preacher as my mediator between me and Christ. The Pope claims he's a mediator between yeah, us and Christ. He claims he's an auto Christos. He's another Christ. He's the mediator. And he has all these sacraments, the mass, baptism, uh, last rites. And these um, things that the Pope and his priests can do can forgive sins. So if I want to have my sins forgiven, I'm supposed to go to the Catholic organization and the Catholic priest has delegated authority through the bishops from the Pope to forgive me of my sins. That's the biggest mistake that most people make. To have okay. your sins forgiven, you go to Christ directly and you bypass man-made religious organizations. In verse 21, it gives us the idea so it starts off saying that the people who say Lord, uh, not everyone saying Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, says, but the one doing the will of the Father who is up in the, in the heavens will. So it's the people who are doing God's will on the earth today well, that will get salvation. That's what it says under. It's like, I suppose it's like, uh, so I think an illustration. If, if you were to get paid and decorators and to decorate your house, and you told them all the things you wanted done. You wanted to have and painted a certain colour, certain wallpapers, etc. But when you came back and you found that you'd had to paint the living room, you'd painted the kitchen, and he painted with different paint and different wallpaper, you wouldn't pay him because he wasn't doing what he was told, would you? You'd, you'd think to yourself, well, excuse me, that's not what I told you to do. They, well, they may have been very sincere, and they may have been happy to do it, and sincere in what he believed, but you wouldn't pay him because you never did what he was told. And there's lots of religions just now who say things, what they believe, and do things, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily true. So you've got to look what Jehovah's will is, what God's will is today, and then do it. Um, the will of Jehovah is to believe on the Son. We're not to believe on organisations or to look for some organisation and then join some oh. organisation and put our faith in um, keep, 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 some keep that some mind, some man. Keep that thought in mind. Right? Keep that thought in mind. Right? It's not to go with organisation. And yet, when Jesus was on the earth, he organised the preaching work, didn't he? Uh, it's a, it's a chapter ten of Matthew where he organised seventy to preach. That's where it started. It started for a central point, and the preaching work was started. And I think by Matthew twenty-eight, it says, "Go there and make disciples of people of all the nations." But you're making the mistake uh -huh. that many religious people make. You're pointing me to an organization. It doesn't matter well, whether it's organization. It doesn't, the preaching it, work. it doesn't it doesn't matter whether it's the Mormon organization or the Seventh day Adventist organization or the Catholic organization or the Jehovah's Witness organization or the some organization of some Pentecostal TV preacher or the Christadelphian organization. The Bible commands us to go to the Son. John 6, I'll read from verse 38 to 40, if you would allow me, sir. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm not getting against it. Look, look. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Now listen to this, John 6, 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Raise up 
is 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 figurative there in that context for a person who has been given salvation it points us to christ the will of the father is that we believe on the son and we place our faith in him because it's the son who buys our salvation who earns our salvation by his willing willing death and then his resurrection now the pope hasn't bought my salvation the head of the mormon church hasn't bought my salvation the governing body of jehovah's witnesses haven't bought my salvation the vile tv preachers on christian tv haven't bought my salvation the mormons haven't bought my salvation and the head of the christadelphians haven't bought my salvation my salvation is bought by christ so christianity tells us that we're to go to the son the will of the father is that we go to the son and believe in him but what people do unfortunately is they often say we've got something better than that we have a religious middleman we have our organization and our organization is how we're going to be saved we're going to be saved through the catholic organization We're going to be saved through the Mormon organization, through the Pentecostal TV organization. We pay our tithes to some Pentecostal preacher for his new Mercedes. And if we pay enough money and we clap our hands and raise our hands and put on a fake smile, we're going to earn salvation. You can't earn salvation. It's a gift of God. If you don't place your faith in the Son, you can't have salvation because the Bible points us to Christ, not to any organization. Saying that. He's, he's saying that as if I don't believe that. I do, I do believe there is no salvation anywhere else except Jesus. I believe Jesus is my personal saviour. I love Jesus. I model my life on Jesus. How how can be Jesus be your personal saviour? The watchtower says he's he not. He died for me. Jesus died for me. Jesus died. died for n- no, Jesus died in Jehovah's Witness theology for the anointed Jehovah's Witnesses. They are in the new covenant, not the not the great crowd. If you have you read Insight in the Scriptures, Insight in the Scriptures points out that you you are not in the new covenant. I mean, are you one of the great crowd or are you one of the anointed hundred and forty four thousand? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm one of the great crowd. Well then, but oh, look, let me let me just say, are you actually looking for anything? I mean, if you found you, if you think you found salvation, then we're just arguing over words. And I feel as if it's, it's actually coming into an argument. I think it's getting a bit argumentative, and I don't really want it to be like that. I don't want to argue with you. If you found salvation in Jesus and you're happy with that, then just leave it. Why why chase up some something else if you don't believe it? Do you know what I mean? I don't know about you. Are you actually looking for something? Are you looking for you know, some kind of guidance of what, Robert? Um, could I read Lesson 19, Paragraph 1, if that's possible, which talks about truth? What, uh, is this in the, the Joy Life Forever brochure again? Yes, Lesson 19 on page 79, uh, Paragraph 1. It's uh, about okay. six six lines. Do you mind if I do that? Okay. On what did Jehovah's Witnesses base their beliefs? Jesus said God's word is truth, John 17, 17. Like Jesus, Jehovah's Witnesses have always based their beliefs on God's word. Consider our modern day history. In the late 19th century, a group of Bible students carefully began to examine the Bible. They based their beliefs on what it said, even when those beliefs differed from church doctrines. Then they began sharing those Bible truths with others, and there's an asterisk, because at the bottom of the paper copy on page 79, in the online version, it's the end of the chapter, the asterisk points to a footnote which says, quote, Our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879. So it mentions truth three times. It says that The Watchtower has published Bible truth consistently since 1879 is that an honest and a truthful statement i would say so i would say that people have been searching the scriptures to try and find the truth and it's more light uh, if they study the scriptures more then the, the more they actually understand it then they publish what they find um are you aware that origin are you aware that originally for about 50 years roughly 
the Watchtower taught that the second presence of Christ was 1874. It was changed to 1914 in about 1930. It's more complicated than that because there were flip-flops and back and forwards and for a period they, they were promoting I both beliefs. Well, well, we had to search the scriptures to try and find the, the truth. There was a lot of truth buried in church doctrines, etc. Yeah. So the book Prophecy on page 65 says the second presence of Christ is from 1874. Is that the truth? I can't. I've not read it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I was the, I was the Jehovah's Witness back then. Right. Um, Studies in Scripture, Volume 4, page 604, says that Christ became king in 1878. I thought beca- that Christ became king at his resurrection. But Studies in the Scripture, Volume 4, says he became king in 1878. You don't believe that now. You believe he became king in 1914. King over... I, I don't actually read that, do you know what I mean? So I can't remember reading that. I can't remember reading that anyway. Um, I, think, I think, I mean, you've obviously studied the literature pretty... A lot more than I have, but, uh, well, why is that? Well, uh, to tell you, to tell you the actual truth, when, when I get contact with the okay, I can respect that, sir. But your book says our principal journal, the Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879. That is either a truthful statement in your book enjoy life forever which was published um i think it was published three years ago i think yes it it was printed in 2021 so it's only three years old now that statement the watchdown has published bible truth consistently since 1879 is either truthful or it's a lie not just a lie back then it's a lie now they would be lying now because they know that they haven't published Bible truth consistently since 1879. Are you aware that originally Pastor Russell came to the conclusion that Jesus Christ became Almighty God at his resurrection? That's in Watchtower, 1893, page 115. And he also produced um, a manual of references in the Watchtower called Berean Bible Teacher's Manual, and on page 454, it quotes Revelation 1.8, and it says that Christ became Almighty God at his resurrection. Now, that's just two references. A brilliant Bible teacher's manual was published in 1909. So th- I've also got the finished mystery. I've, I've got that literature, original copies, not, not dodgy stuff photoshopped on the Internet. I've got copies of the finished mystery. The finished mystery on page 15 and page 240 state that Jesus Christ is Almighty God. But the context is he became Almighty God at his resurrection. I think at the start of the organisation, as it was built up, Pardon? Maybe, I've got, maybe I've got lots of things wrong, but as time goes on in more studies of the scriptures, they, they try and get more and more enlightened. I'm sorry, Robert, I feel as if you're not waiting for anything, as if like there's a much longer than here. I'm really sorry I caught the conversation, so I'm not about to carry on this one. But but hold 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 on a minute, sir. Just just wait. Your book on page seventy nine of Enjoy Life Forever says, "Quote our principal journal, the Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since eighteen seventy nine. That is clearly a lie." And he's he's hung up. Um, I hope I wasn't too aggressive. I was trying to tone things down a little bit. But um, anyway, maybe I've given him something to think about and maybe who knows maybe he'll he'll bump into another christian who will um um you know develop these sort of questions and you know one 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 sows one waters and somebody else reaps the harvest let's hope that a few seeds were sown that he might actually think that the watchtower hasn't published bible truth consistently since 1879 they're actually complete inveterate liars. They've lied consistently since 1879, and they're still lying now. They are absolutely liars and false prophets. And I think the most important thing was um, the verse we went to. I think it was John 6.30, that the will of Jehovah is that we go to the sun. And unfortunately, this is what so many religious people won't do. So many religious people won't go to Christ. 
They go to men who they can see. They go to a man-made organization that they can see. They put their faith in what they can see here on earth. If they see a religious man wearing fancy robes and having a special title, many people put their faith in that man. And I think that we have to put our faith in Christ. Thank you.